Hey, it's Chris. Let's do this crowdfunding roundup. What do you need to know? What's going on? Everything you need to know in one video from new campaigns launched this past week. And as always, what do you think? What should I do? I put it on the community page, but you know what? I heard you guys. And you know what? I'm going to start a Ko-Fi, the coffee thing, right? Like K-O-F-I. I'm going to start one of those. And if you're really interested, if you're one of those publishers, designers, uh, upcoming people, there's going to be a few things on there because I think I'm going to lend my services out for a crowdfunding critique. I joked about it a couple weeks ago. Other people can do it. I can do it. I see more crowdfunding pages. It seems like a week and reading and looking at more pages than almost anyone else on the interweb. So hit me up over there. I also have a Patreon, but this apparently is a little bit more accessible and uh, a lot better than a GoFundMe. Nope, not doing the GoFundMe. That's all I got. Let's go. You ready? So Mythwin reprint. Expansion, what do you need to know? Very interesting test of the market here. Quarter of a million dollars. And I, I really say that because I, I had this in my head that this was going to be like well over half a million dollars by the time I looked at this today. And it's not there, but you know, still like three weeks to go, right? Like it's going to do hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars. But I, I, you know, in my head, I was comparing it to the previous campaign, which had 11,000 backers and, uh, you know, well over a million dollars right there. And that's Canadian, I know, but it still goes over a million dollars, I believe, if you do the, you know, conversion. So, the interesting standpoint here is just going to be like, do people like the idea of, but do they like the practicality of this open world, very peaceful, just harmonious style kumbaya game, right? I previewed the first time around. They sent me uh, an email a couple weeks ago asking, you know, not just me, not just me, let me be clear. Uh, just reviewers, like, are you interested in reviewing it? And, you know, it was one of the few that more recently of the big box games I have passed on. Because I, I got to play the prototype and I was like, oh, I see what you're doing. That is kind of cool. That is kind of different. It's not for me. And, and so, you know, again, I just stayed away from it from that standpoint. And I, I don't think this expansion is going to change your mind either, right? It's the friends and family expansion. If you go over to Board Game Geek, they actually have a link to it. And it's offering you more character interaction at more action locations during that phase of the game. So if you want to get in on this, uh, again, it's going to be that with an additional layer or two, right? asymmetric characters with their unique mechanics and how you're building this zen-like village, garden, uh, city, whatever you want to call it, along the way. Open-ended, no sort of, well, you know, like, this is it, folks. So that's the question. And do you like the idea of a game like this versus do you like the practicality of it? I love the idea of it. I've now practically found that it's just not for me. You know what? And that's okay. Just like I've said with plenty of the other games on this channel that I've covered, talked about, uh, ranted about, right? Like, it doesn't have to be for everybody. It doesn't have to be for you. There are plenty of awesome, freaking amazing games that are just never going to be things that you like, right? I just looked at and was reminded of the Ready, Set, Bet campaign that just, you know, I think ended recently on crowdfunding as well, right? The deluxified, deluxified version that everybody said was so freaking amazing, right? I don't have the group for that. Don't have the dynamic for that. Uh, definitely don't have the then interest in blinging it the heck out, right? That would be a, not a game that I would feel proud to play, but a, more just proud to own. And if you're like me, like i am got too much stuff owned already. Like I wanna be playing it just in general, not proud to own it. And, and so, you know, again, I think this is doing something cool. It is doing something unique. It's got a narrative. I like the quick setup, quick teardown, quick save aspect of things. And the question is never, am I going to like it? So therefore, you're going to like it, right? It's just, are you going to like it in the first place? And it doesn't matter how much it is, $10 or $200, if you're not getting it played, right? That's why I'm sort of, you know, from yesterday's video, Star Wars Unlimited Unboxing, right? Like, uh, you know, I've spent more money on that than, you know, a couple decent Kickstarter campaigns, right? And I've already got more play than many of those games as well. And that is the balancing act here. And I'm getting divergent and, you know, going way off of what this is, right? But your unique boards, your unique upgrades, your unique mechanisms, and how each of these characters are going to be doing things slightly differently and playing their own skills and getting all of those things that you need to do. And you get the gameplay all in pledge and you get two extra expansions to go along with it which again is a lot of content for a lot of price if you don't know that you love this game already, right? That is the big conundrum as a whole. And you can see here, it's gonna cost you almost $100 for the game in the first place. And then the everything new, nope, the gameplay is gonna cost you about $200 plusing shipped. 
So that's what you have to think about, right? $200 for this style. And that's why nowadays, you know, it's one thing if it's a mini expansion, right? That you can say, okay, this expansion is $6, right? But when expansions are running upwards of like $40 plus, those are big expensive swings and misses nowadays. If this game really falls anywhere, not in your top 25 to 50 games. Let's be frank about that. Because outside of that, it's not going to get the play worthwhile for expansions. Truth be told. And again, maybe I'm just speaking from myself and you guys are going to listen to this part and go, nope, 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 Chris, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. And I, you know what? Go awesome. Freaking awesome. You know, if you're one of those few people, I know, I know one or two of you, it, that are like, I play this style of game all the time, right? I don't have many like it. And I just love it and we play it and play it and play it and play it. And you're going to be the exception rather than the rule though. New gameplay pledge though with the expansion. I mean, it's way up here actually comparatively. It's not that much. It's only about 50 bucks plus shipping. So sure. Get a little bit more of everything. Get some errata. Get some revision of the stuff that they put out. Which again is sort of good and, and sort of always mixed feelings when you have a second crowdfunding campaign come around. And they're like, well, we redid all of this. <laughs> right? And it is inevitable almost too. But again, I think that goes to the hobby as a whole where that is not a strong suit of the hobby. That is not a, uh, well, strength or even a focus of the hobby in general. Like it's more just get out and, you know, again, it's, you know, I'm, pr I'm pre-reading and proofing all of the proofs and the miniatures and the deluxified content instead of, you know, really putting the screws to the rule book. And again, I'm not targeting this campaign. Let me be very clear about Mythwind, right? Like the rule book is fine, but I'm talking about all of the other ones where you go at retail as well as crowdfunding that you just, you know, like, like seriously, like get a technical writer, get somebody with rule book experience, get some lay person who's very experienced in the hobby to look at this and say, can you play this game if I hand this a rule book to you without any coaching, counseling or anything else aside? And the problem is with too many games nowadays, there's too much ambiguity and I just don't feel like that's being done. And that's true with a lot of companies across the board. And I'm probably gonna take some flack for that, for that take as a whole. But you know what? I stand by it because again, I'm reading rule books on a weekly basis of about a dozen rule books, retail, crowdfunding, otherwise. Some are much, much easier. Some are much, much more in depth. Some they're much clearer in terms of what you actually need to know. And again, this there's enough content out here from all of the bigger name people, all of the stuff that you need to know, all of the people with better opinions than my own that you can figure out whether or not this is like it for you. So take their word for it, ignore everything I say, right? Because again, second tier. So go to one of the first tiers and decide whether or not um, you wanna know more about this game from that aspect of things. So it's a known quantity, it's great from that aspect, but I just wonder, okay, if people you know, aren't getting it as much the second time around, is that just because they've got it more than enough already with what was offered the first time? Because I mean, two big box expansions is a, still a ton of freaking content nowadays, especially with all these campaign games. Or is it just a sign that, you know, some people didn't find it was right for them and you're just gonna have a more niche crowd, you know, this time around as well too, which is completely okay too. You still got your lovers. Cause I mean, again, like I said at the beginning, a couple hundred thousand is a couple hundred thousand. <laughs> Better than my GoFundMe. Anyway, so AI Apocalypse, uh, auto battle card game, again, $12,000, it funded. Uh, you didn't watch my video from earlier this week, but I talked about this in the upcoming expansion standalone for uh, Mindbug, which again, like this is a solid game. The combos with this game and the designer reached out to me after I published it and he's like, yeah, dude, the tons of freaking combos, tons of mitigation, tons of like potential stealing and, and doing that from, you know, the other side of things and trying to balance the uh, Marathrash as well as the Euro aspects of things right because some of it's under your control with the euro combo building engine in front of you with your six player slots that you're slowly laying out and you have the double-sided cards of three different varieties the reds the whites and the yellow ishes as you can see down here the ammo cards and so they all give you different ways because on one side you have like the hero that you're using for the battles and on the other side you have the slot that you have to put down in the first place by spending one of those card heroes in order to have them available for that second phase of battles in the first place and the other thing i said in my uh video was that 
uh, the second phase of things, the battle is a little bit more that might not be your suiting. The first side of things is really combo horrific. Get cards, draft them, and get cards, play them, and just optimize and combo there to your heart's extent and really get really the control that you were looking for. The second battle phase, though, is you're drawing cards from the top of a deck and seeing if your color drawn matches one of the colors of your heroes down below, essentially. And if it doesn't, well, you can kind of mitigate it, but it, you might not be able to mitigate it at all or to nearly your heart's content and so the battle phase of things might be the make it or break it so if you're really interested in that check out it just from that side of things again plenty of other people talking about things they show you a very good example of how to play here it's not difficult to learn how to play some of the combos again just need a little clarification with the aliens and the rogues and you know which combos can go with which and when exactly from that side of things but all in all i mean it's what you see is what you get so you can upgrade you can gain strength and you have special ones that get drafted to play an anti-runaway leader, if you will, to allow you to catch up. Because as you get more damage, you get more stronger heroes or, you know, whatever you want to call them, available to you so that you can have better battling presence as a whole. So expansion with a campaign mode. There you go. Didn't know about that. And uh, five to eight players as well. So that'd be the other thing, right? Like five to eight players would be a lot. But the simultaneous play of both of the phases makes it relatively smooth and fast. So it's definitely not going to overstay its welcome. But if you've got five to eight players, I mean, there's potentially also going to have less traction, right? Like if two players are going, one of you is potentially going to take big amount of damage every other turn. Two, three, four even. Plus that, I would be a little bit concerned because, you know, the battles you can tie. And so if you tie, you both get a point. And so it's the highest point total minus whatever your point total is. That's the amount of damage you take. But then there's also a sudden death mode that you're dealing with in addition. And so sudden death is basically once someone gets eliminated, everyone else that's still in, uh, next time you take a damage, you're just out. doesn't matter how much health you had prior to that. So I can see that being a little bit of a concern if that's your, well, not your jive in the first place. So there you go. Uh, small indie publisher, though. Uh, definitely worth looking and seeing from that aspect of things. And you know what? It's cool that they're funded. And I didn't even look at the price here from Ali Moly. Um, this is... Yeah, it's 30 bucks. Okay, 30 bucks for the core. About what I expect. Full gameplay is going to cost you just under 40. I mean, reasonable. If you want to play with eight, I, I, you know, again, I don't have that player count at my any sort of regular ish. So I'd be an easy pass from that. But if the campaign mode is really something to look into, I'd be more curious about that aspect. But auto battling, simultaneous play, lots of cards, lots of combos. Check it out. It's that type of week and Heroes of the Sanctum, the Saturday card game. Again, Funded just higher than uh, AI Apocalypse here at $18,000 at the time of me filming this. Very similar backer numbers, but a very different dynamic and a very different aspect because it says the one to four players here, but when you read the rule book, it really reminds me of something of like Frostpunk in that sense that really what you're doing is you're taking these four heroes in these lanes and these lanes are going to be next to uh, basically your quests as well as your bad guys around the outside. And you're going to have like lanes doing damage across the phase if you can't defeat them or block all the damage that happens. But realistically, this game is really set around uh, this action selection system that's going to be present on one of these cards uh, down here in the lower left-hand corner. As you can see, it's got nine different spaces that you're going to be putting your little tokens down and having a certain number of actions based on whatever that card says in the first place divided up between your four heroes. And those four heroes are your four hero cards that are present here. So you always are going to have four heroes, it looks like. And then you're going to be action selection based on you know what actions are available on this card in the first place but then also what their each value is. Blues require one action token or one action point. Reds require two, and so you can't obviously overspend. And which heroes you're utilizing, if they're stunned, you can't utilize them. So again, the dynamic of choosing and, and which row they're in and how the dynamics are going to go with that, that's where the crux of it is. There's a quest phase of things. There's an environment or you know a location side of things as well because you can proximity and move between areas. But the gist of it, though, at the core is that you're going to be taking these actions, trying to attack, trying to take out the bad guys, trying to achieve the quests, and then trying to mitigate what's done back to you because they're going to sum total that line minus your defense. And that's the damage you're going to take, take enough damage to the banner or the quest area. And then you don't win and you kind of lose. Modular, highly expandable. You have 12 different heroes, they say, in the base game, like 11 different environments, three different difficulty levels. And then, well, kind of mix and match apart from that. And so the only thing I'll say, though, is some of these quotes, again, like I am very specific about my quotes now on the crowdfunding page. Like if you're getting paid, it seems weird to say that this game is really fun. I don't know. Like I just had this discussion with someone else in the comment section. Like if you put out paid content, should you have an opinion at all? 
putting it out there. Even if you say it's fun or not fun, um, is that an opinion that, you know, I, I, it, it's always a weird dilemma for me in these situations. But nowadays, um, I don't think most backers care anymore either way. So what you're getting, though, on the page, you see the creatures, you see the strategy. Uh, here are the reactive environments that I talked about, the enemies, you're upgrading your heroes. And again, like Rado's quote up there is, it's got all of these different aspects. And the thing that I look at it more like, actually, this is probably the better comparison, is Killforth, right? Remember uh, all of the Killforth games where they're multiplayer, but at least in those games, you can kind of have some multi-decision. In this game, it's everybody collectively making decisions together. It's not you have actually one of those individual heroes necessarily. Actually, the rule book even says like one player like basically does all of the stuff and you can collectively make the decisions together. So that's kind of the dynamic you're dealing with here. And does that interest you? Does that not interest you? Um, here are the stratagem cards that I was talking about that you're going to be flipping over once per round. And so then like one card is on top and then you just flip to the next one. You can see the iconography is all different in different areas and different arrangements on each one of them. They show you the actions and the action points there that I mentioned. And they show you some of the bad guy stuff, the passive effects of each of your individual heroes and everything else that's going to go along with it with the quest tracking and the gameplay content. So again, very similarly priced, 30 versus $31 here for the base game. And then, well, $75 for, oof, two expansions and a campaign book. I mean, again, I, it reminds me very much of Killforth in the setup and the overall dynamic, but the gameplay itself is probably significantly different just from those aspects. It's just, again, whether or not that style of sort of multiplayer, but also collective decision-making is for you. And if it is, again, this has spades of actual, uh, well, parts of the engine, if you will, but if that's not necessarily your thing, I mean, I look at this as a, a really good solo game. That's kind of how it, you know, looks like to me, right? Mage Knight is one to four players too, <laughs> right? Uh, what was the Epic expansion actually offering there? I kind of missed that. Um, okay, Incursion, Delve Deeper, six new heroes, triple the amount of loot. Okay, so I mean, that expansion's adding a ton of content actually. Uh, optional multiplayer expansion, all new companion mechanisms. So again, just more and more layers. So, I mean, it seems like a very solid uh, offering here from FireTap, but again, it's got to be right for you. Check it out. Mr. Meeple, board game close season seven. I don't know. It's board game close, folks. I need a new hoodie. Anyway, uh, again, I think, you know, you have your own style. And if this is your style, at least this is so much better than like wrestling t-shirts. I see people all the time being like, oh, cool wrestling t-shirt dropped. Yeah, I'm on Reddit for uh, wrestling sometimes. And they post these shirts and I have never, ever seen a wrestling t-shirt that I would ever even consider wearing out in public right? They're so over the top. They're so just kind of, you know, and so I guess this is more me anyway, like uh, multicolored bright socks. Now, if you had compression stockings of these socks, I would buy them in a heartbeat. Like I wear compression socks on a daily basis because I stand on my feet for like hours at a time. So I would be all over that. Um, yeah, anyway, but pay prices, get money, get clothes and t-shirts are, you know, again, oof, eh, that's not bad. That's not horrible. It's not bad. Most of the t-shirt websites that I go to nowadays, they're, you know, on sale. They're running about $22 for a premium t-shirt. So that's pretty comparable, actually. None of these designs are terribly interesting to me. But again, like I have weird eclectic style, but I actually kind of like the socks better. Actually, the hoodie's not bad, though. Wasn't kidding about the hoodie. Oh, okay. So anyway, it's on GameFound and it's got a bunch of money already raised. So let's check how much it actually has. Uh, $8,000 and it's 200% of its funding goal. There you go. Next up, Race and Write. It's got $1,000. It's a print and play, roll and write, and you can get it as a digital file almost right away. And so the only question is I don't really quite get the full flow of things. Basically, all you're doing in this game is you're having two phases, right? Choosing your gear. You have six gears that you're choosing from on a turn-by-turn, round-by-round basis. And so after five of those turns in that round, five of those six gears obviously will be used up. The tricky part is if you choose the highest gear, then you get three speed points. If you choose the lowest gear, you get one. Everybody else in between gets two, but if anybody chooses the same one, you also only get one. So that's what you're doing. And then you're moving around this racetrack turn by turn. And depending if you time it right, somehow, I don't quite get that aspect of things, then you can get bonuses for the speed points that you got and the type of stage that you're on. But it doesn't really say any further. There's a solitaire special solo mode and these are the pledge levels if you want. So everything from Race Champion, three latest games with all the previous expansions that they talk about here, Vitrium, Industrialization, and Wildlife Dice, which they give you a little bit of a smattering sample down here of. And then again, you've got a little bit of upgraded uh, stretch goals and extra content here in addition. So 
Uh, I just wish I knew kind of how that worked a little bit more. So is there actually a little bit more down here? No, these are just all the old games. So, I mean, again, it seems like a nice lighter style roll and write concept, print and play as well. So the fact that it's got a thousand dollars and these are your values for pledge levels uh, is actually freaking sweet. So yeah, I mean, that's just over $10 a person right there. So good job racing, right? Check it out. Next up, the Incal Infinite based off of a uh, comic book, graphic novel side of things that I am just not familiar with, even though it says it's one of the famous, most well-acclaimed ones of all time. So uh, I'm sure you guys know it uh, because I'm just not in on this pop culture style of things. And so this game reminds me of like Chiasmos, if you will, if you remember that style of game. And so essentially what you've got is you've got these six locations that you're going to be slowly moving around the ship from. And when you land at one of these locations in a clockwise situation, you're going to be placing cards underneath it in order to create a combination that, or set collection that's necessary based on the number of cards that are needed in the first place. And if it's full, you can't land there, you can't do it. And if you're trying to win the game, you're starting to get these incals and you're trying to be able to reveal them in order based on your knowledge of them by completing those set collections in the first place. And if you complete the ritual, you have to like flip them all face up, all six of them in a particular order uh, numerically speaking and then you win the game you get uh, penalized though as you move around if you go to different locations if you pass over a certain spot on the board the bergs is what it says you actually get a damage and so if you get enough damage the clogs up your deck you lose or if you run out of cards in a card based situation and you cannot refill your hand back up to four cards at the end of your turn you also lose and that's kind of the game in a nutshell. Uh, two different editions. If you want to get the exclusive edition with a slightly different art, it comes with a t-shirt and a digital extra as well. So a little bit of uh, extra content there if they hit stretch goals. And then they break it down here, right? The exclusive pack, the exclusive t-shirt, the classic edition, and then the exclusive edition. And the only thing I can see of is that it's got the different art box style of things. And it looks like Again, maybe I'm wrong, but you're paying like $16 for that because even if you click on the pledge, right, it doesn't say, it just says it's a collector's item. So that's why I was trying to figure out up here because the two editions of the game, it says in addition to the game, commercially available, it will also produce an alternative edition. So perks, uh, again, oh, they only, the badges, the t-shirt, right? And the cult comic is available to subscription wise as well. So I don't really quite get that, but again, I'm clearly just missing something as well. So uh, is this, your ilk like a lighter style chaosmos situation but anyway it is funded and it's got seventeen thousand dollars again that seems to be about the going rate for funding this week so take that for we will in cal infinite then we have the next in the tokyo series tokyo capsule hotel which is a real-time bartering dividing subdivisions and while well, making little capsule hotels you read the rule book on this one Watch a little bit of uh, video how to play because this one really is going to be something different. Like it says, real time bartering. You're putting your seal down and then you have to purchase within a certain time frame and no one else can do it as well until you sort of finish what you're doing, dividing, purchasing, bartering, and potentially paying off your loan in order to end the game in the first place. Because if you can ever pay off the loan that you start off the game with from a differing amount, because it's going to allow you a little bit of asymmetry there and how much you're taking out at the beginning of the game, and obviously the interest that accumulates along the way, well, that triggers the end game. And then whoever has the most uh, points or money at the end of the game wins as a whole. So again, purchase barter income, go back to step one, two to five players somehow going to be taking you one to two hours to play this one. Uh, this is definitely a try before you buy. You need to check out the tabletop simulator in order to see what it is going to be looking at. They're looking at giving you as well a percentage off on their back catalog. So Again, this has a very uh, well-supported indie crowd, and the other Tokyo games have been, I think, relatively well-liked. It's just kind of which one, and is this one different enough from that aspect? Not one that I'm strong on, so don't go off of my explanation. Give it a harder look-see yourself personally there. Next up, Wolf Days, Cat Days, Dino Days. Tabletop card playing, same rule set, different dynamics and action cards in each of these three games again it's kind of hard to tell which one you may like because this is essentially a two player use per deck game style situation with the seven days of the week represented by the seven colors in front of you a certain number of cards depending on which game it is here uh that you're going to be doing five cards in the first one with dogs and four cards with the dinos and the cats and you play them on individual days and whoever fills up all of their days first triggers the end game whoever gets the most points based off of the points that each of them score 
and how they're interacting on those days or next to each other is going to be the winner. They say the actions though are going to be completely different and then there are specific action cards that you're going to be taking besides just the actual dog cards you're laying on the days in the first place in order to manipulate and score more efficiently and overall just better. And that's it. Again, you can play with more people if you want to by getting more decks and it's just giving you different actions. They say basically it's the same thing though, right? Gameplay is the same, different rules, you completely unique, different experience. So same thing with dinos. That's it. Do you like the theme? Which theme is best for you? That's all that's on the page as a whole. So what's the price point here for each one of these games? It's about seven bucks. Mix, match, choose. A uh, little hard to tell which one might be for you given the dynamics or they say the different rules of each one of them. So again, uh, give it a look, see on the how to play and see if it's right for you. Next up, going back over here to Super Train, Superhero Trains Defending a Robot City. Uh, seven plus ages, but again, the dynamic of how this is sort of interconnecting with a gear usage train moving sort of pick up and deliver and well, engine build in a, a more literal sense. Uh, you really need to give the uh, how to play video more than anything else on this page a look see because again, twelve thousand dollars, right? Like that teen thousands is seemingly uh, what they're going for here. This is from the uh, publisher as well from Quest Kids. I've talked about that previously as a great kids game, and this is just a train incorporation of a different mechanistic approach as a whole. And so what you're going to be doing through a, like a three phase turn system is you're going to be slowly rolling dice that are going to correspond to the roller, which is sort of the bad guy, uh, where it's going to be attacking but then also what you're gonna be able to do by placing gears down in the first place and you get little uh, truck, engine, train meeples there as well. Uh, so, you know, do you like this style of things? What you're doing here is you're laying these gears out on the board as you're trying to solve these emergencies and also getting some semi-cooperative help to your other heroes. As you're seeing, you can lay these gears down if you have three that are touching in a row and that's the main aspect of when you can lay them down in the first place as the allocation goes along. So that's going to be the biggest big picture overview that you're going to need, but the objectives, the how to it, and then also sort of like with Quest Kids, you're doing this cooperatively, but then also the person with the most points at the end wins as well. So a, not like semi-co-op, but uh, cooperation between kids, but you know, there still is a winner if you actually want to total it up at the end. You can see the components that go along here, the how to play down here as well with the rule book, right? Like I said, prepare it. You got emergency cards, you got the roller looming, and then you choose your train, roll the dice, generate those gears that can only be placed if you have three of these tokens down in a row. The roller goes, but it only goes after a certain number of rounds at the beginning of the game because depending on the player count, two to three or four to five will determine what round you start rolling or utilizing those with. Then you go around the track and deliver and uniquely go to these locations. Then you go to these unique locations throughout Gearland, but also avoiding the roller and where it's gonna go in the first place. The pickup and deliver of passengers and cargo along the way as well as solving and thwarting those emergencies that the roller is putting out so there you go rulebook is there tabletop simulator soon and if you want a few deluxe add-ons as well it can be added on so that's super trains again from the makers of quest kids so if this is anything like quest kids um i definitely give this a look see if you're looking for something maybe the step up quest kids is like your sort of intro dungeon crawl super simple but actually engaging and this maybe is looking like the same thing from a train pickup and deliver style thing. So there you go. Then we have this. I'm going to mispronounce it. So uh, the water cycle, <laughs> right? Uh, Central Michigan. Shout out Michigan here as another Michigan native. Uh, Central Michigan University Press, three of $5,000. Essentially, all you're doing is you're drawing your hand of cards and you're placing arrows on these cycles in order to control the most of them by the time somebody, well, has finally filled up the whole board. Because uh, once all of the spots on the board have a arrow either from you or your opponent the game ends whoever controls the most wins but you have to play them in sets sets that are next to each other and so if you don't have a set that is uh, able to be played next to each other then you have to discard and redraw and rinse and repeat until the end game is finally triggered here with the introductory and the advanced board as well as telling you where you can actually play those and how those arrows are going to be going back and forth in the first place. That's the game in a nutshell. Relatively straightforward, short time frame. Video right there as well. You can get it as print and play as well as a just regular printed version. So that's everything. You can get a few of their old ones or their previous versions as well of other games they've put out. And fulfillment, there you go. $8 to $12 for a single shipping. And CMU, well, close to home there. Water cycle, check it out. I'm not mispronouncing that word this week. I'm staying away from ones that I screw up. Then Floodlands, another rolling right here. Again, $1,400, killing it. If you look at the price as well on this game, because it's only about a $5 price point, 
Bloodlands, again, where you're drawing over, it looks like 12 rounds. Uh, there's a playthrough video. There's not a rule book on this page, but essentially what you're doing is you're rolling these three dice, using two of them to draw a feature, one of them then to determine how many sides you're putting on a tile, and then you're slowly connecting these tiles using the features, the edges, and filling in next to shorelines and getting resources in that manner on this grid hex-based system. Counting up your score, go, and you're done. Again, small indie publisher doing a roll and write. I wish there was a little bit more, but again, the how to play video right here has the exact details on the page as well. So I wouldn't mind seeing a rule book or what else they have in store. But again, it's going to be light, just like the other roll and write we talked about. So if that's more your ilk, supporting small indie roll and write publishers. So there you go. Then last up here, Gun It. And the creator reached out to me. He's like, hey, man, I wasn't sure if <laughs> you were able to cover this or not. And I remember this. I remember looking at this page. I remember thinking about it in my head. And it launched on like one of the days I think I do this video. And so it was like the tweener right in between. So I wanted to mention it. So gun it. Your crew surrounded as Rado's quote, right? Matrix 2, motorcycles on the highway is what they've got going on here. What you have is a car that you're going to be driving in this grid-based system, essentially. Because you're going to surround it on all sides in an eight-based card surrounding of various enemies and you're gonna have three different cards in your hand sort of a turn order card a weapon as well as a direction as you can see here on the picture and what you do on your turn is you essentially play your cards you either play an action direction or you play a weapon and what you're gonna be doing though the main crux of this game is those a real-time simultaneous play depending on how, how complex and how difficult you want to make it you have a certain time limit to well potentially trade cards with your partners and really it says one to four players but the, the player count i think is going to be optimally best at four it reminds me a little bit of like a captain sonar in the sense you can play less but i think optimally it's going to be four because each character is going to have their own unique thing and you want to be able to do it individually and then sort of have that dynamic of one two then three then four in the turn orders and you're going to be trying to blow up these cars maneuver out of their way and cause them to crash either gaining experience pileups or points depending on what your scenario requires you in the first place and so again limited communication just like that loads of cars that you're going to be dealing with there's hostiles at a basic level and an advanced level there's additional action cards in the same way the constraints in the settings are going to be modular in terms of which ones you're choosing each game to make it completely different and then the additional components as the deluxified or the advanced mode allows so 27 dollars 35 if you want a little more of that content as a whole and if you want you know your name on the box you can pay a whole lot more so that's cool it tells you what's in the expansion here and it's an indie game it gives you the whole setup here the rule book is on the page tabletop simulator has it as well and you go until either well you wreck or you meet the victory condition as well you can create your own challenges there's also a solo mode but yeah this strikes me more as like a good multiplayer like they said 30 minute or less game so there you go randy thanks for sending me the email check it out that's it. That is the roundup this week and tomorrow. Less news, less news overall. Not as much new breaking news in the past week, but we will be talking about the best upcoming, top, most anticipated, whatever, whatever adjective. Which adjective, by the way, would make you click on the video more? Top, best, upcoming, anticipated. What do you think? I'm trying to figure that out from the YouTube and the YouTube algorithms, so I don't have a clue. But April. April because April is freaking upon us next week. So, and there are two massive mothers launching next week as well. We'll be talking about cough, cough, millennium blades, cough, cough, horror on the Orient express. That's, that's all I got. I'm working a ton, working a ton, working a ton, working a ton. So my kids, my kids got Friday off for spring break. They got Friday off, right? It's just a domino effect. They're like, well, people always take Friday off, so let's just give them Friday off. Well, now they get Friday off, and now guess what? People took Thursday off. My kid's like, oh, yeah, so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so we're all missing today because their family left early for spring break on Thursday, right? I don't know. That's all I got. I got to play a bunch of stuff. I'm way behind on stuff. I'm way behind on getting stuff review-wise out. And uh, we're going to have probably at least one multi-game unboxing and or review coming up this next week. So, do you like the Star Wars Unlimited? Do you like the ISS Vanguard? Spoilers, the unboxing this week might be, might be primal. We might just go solo game multi-box in that sense. <laughs> Intrigued? You should be. It's a big box. That's all I got. Stay classy. Have a great freaking day. See you around. Uh, just harmono 